So hello everyone and thank you for joining us for Handmade in Britain's online interactive virtual craft fair. My name is Lucky and we are being joined by Ellie Supper of Ulterior Motive Design. She's going to be guiding us through some of her processes, particularly her design processes, and also be explaining a bit of her brand, Ulterior Motive Designs. So we're looking forward to that. As always, this is an interactive session, so we do encourage you to participate by simply asking any questions you have in the chat box provided, and we will make sure to get through to them before the session. So for now, I'm going to pass it over to Ellie. Hi everyone, I'm Ellie. Um, welcome to the meeting room at my shared studio space in Bristol Textile Quarter. Um, I'm going to start off talking a bit about me and my background and how I got started in textiles. And I'll talk through a bit about my design process and I'll finish up with some concepts that I think are important to keep proofing the textiles business or the sort of textiles future um, design processes that are going to be important over the next few years. So I actually started off as an interior decorator and um, specialising in older properties, mainly rural properties. And that's really where I got interested in home spaces and what makes us comfortable in our homes and what sort of really makes a house a home and how that all ties into a sort of similar room setup and how it flows throughout the house. But I decided I wanted a career that kind of combines my love of travelling with love of interiors and design. So I ended up going to Loughborough University where I studied surface pattern print design. And that's really where I fell in love with the silk screen printing process, which for anyone that doesn't know is one of the traditional methods of getting designs down into cloth. It's quite an involved process. It involves a lot of um, choosing the right fabrics, screen prep, so coating, um, exposing, and then washing out the screens, making sure they're light tight where they need to be. Um, it involves a lot of mixing your own print pastes um, and knowing sort of which print paste works with which fabrics and anticipating how those different elements are going to interact with the fabrics. Silks react very differently to something like velvet. Um, and yeah, that's really where I sort of fell in love with that artisan making process. And as I was writing my dissertation, I got interested in the sort of wider concept of mass consumption and mass production versus this sort of artisan making and how we've become quite dissociated from it. So I started looking at the writings of um, William Morris and John Ruskin, who are still relevant today, even though they were writing a couple of hundred years ago, and how that sort of feeds into a lot of artists and makers' processes today and how we're coming back around to placing more value on the sort of wealth of knowledge that artists and makers accumulate over years and years versus what can be mass produced and mass sold. Um, so yeah, that's sort of, I sort of did a couple of placements and I really became interested in that more artisan level of work and that's kind of fed into what I'm doing today. Um, which also actually feeds into the sort of sustainability zeitgeist that we're currently experiencing. I think that's, that's reawoken people's interest in how did makers learn? What did they do? Um, what different processes? Where are your fabrics coming from? We're all becoming more and more reconnected to the things we buy and particularly the things we dress and have around our homes. Um, so yeah, that feeds into my design process also. So I tend to be inspired by the natural world and places. Um, so I tend to go to a lot of different places, experience the culture, try and read up around it a lot, lots of, um, sort of storytelling elements in my work, things, I love places that are a bit different, maybe have some quirky um, myths and legends around them. Um, for example, current collection was inspired by two National Trust properties, um, one of which was Whitley Court um, near my family home, which actually burnt down um, and is now a sort of grandiose ruin but it's still got this incredible feeling to it and the history behind it is really interesting and the other one was Cork Abbey in Derbyshire which is full of taxidermy and peeling walls and it's all these sort of layers of history combined into it it's got a very interesting um, ownership so it used to be owned by someone that was basically a recluse and just collected everything and everything um, so that's that's sort of where the first collection was inspired. Um, so it's cultural identity and local quirks are big inspirations for me and combining that with um, my views on sustainability and 
sort of long-term quality products and quality fabrics and UK manufacturers as much as possible. Um, so design process starts there. I'll go in for a concept generation and research it thoroughly. Um, from there, I'll then develop a mood board. Um, and alongside that, I'll work on a sketchbook. So sort of exploring all the different things that I find interesting. And then once I've sort of got a nice body of work, I'll take another look at my mood board and start reducing that back down. So I'm then thinking with my customer in mind and the end use of the products um, for design development, what do I think is going to work on what type of product? What do I think is going to work on different types of fabric? And what do I see my customers using those for? What do I think they're going to connect with in my work? From there, it then goes to production and sampling. And then I'll wait for samples back before I mock it up and get it on the website. Um, I work on a made to order basis, so nothing is wasted as much as possible. Um, that's one of the ways I'm working to be more sustainable in an industry that is quite bad for <laughs> uh, environmental degradation. Um, so within that, I'm also thinking about the fabric durability, um, the quality of those fabrics and how long these products are going to last, depending on what fabric I've used and how well they're made. So that's all sort of tied into the design process. Um, in terms of future proofing, I think important principles are timeless design. So something that is going to age well, but maybe has a contemporary twist. So something like the sunflower behind me. It's quite linear, it's quite oversized, but it's on a variety of different backgrounds that could be contemporary or they could be quite heritage depending on what setting they're going into. Um, I only do one collection a year, so that gives me plenty of time to research and develop and really connect with my subject matter, which is a big part of what inspires me a designer, is really getting involved with it and sort of seeing the products come to life as you're designing them. Um, it also means that it's a lot more manageable in terms of you're not producing loads and loads and loads of stuff. You're, you're producing what needs to be produced and you're giving people time to sort of see what you're doing and connect with it. Um, other ways of future proofing are environmentally packaging, environmental packaging. That should be a big one for everyone, I think. Um, we should all be working. There are so many different companies now that are making it easier and easier for us to protect and pass our products that doesn't have an impact on the environment. Um, and the last one is, um, I'm actually a supporter of Ecology, who support sustainable tree planting around the globe, both in the UK and um, in other areas, to offset any damage that is done with um, sending parcels or uh, fabric production. And I also sponsor charities on sales made through my website. I support charities that protect habits and environments that have inspired my designs. So things like the bugs, um, <laughs> are, there will be a, a portion of the profits made will go to a charity that supports those environments. So yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Um, we have a question. Um, so can you see a shift in direction um, in the direction that craft and design is moving in this ever changing world of ours, especially around sustainable materials? Very definitely. There's definitely a shift back. People are much, much more conscious of what they're buying, where it's come from, where it's been produced, how it's been produced. Um, I've certainly seen in the last year, especially, a lot more people choosing to perhaps buy less, but buy higher quality, um, particularly for friends and family. There was a big push last year on the small independent um, campaigns for people to shop local where they can. Obviously, it's been difficult with lockdowns, but um, there's definitely a shift towards people being a little more aware um, and possibly thinking twice before just going ahead and buying. There's definitely been a shift back towards um, bit more responsible, maybe a bit more connected to their products. Thank you. Um, we do have another question. Um, so what is the difference between digital and screen printing? So screen printing is, it can be digitised on a large scale, um, but predominantly with digital printing, you are uploading your designs to a computer programme which will then print them onto a roll of fabric using printers, whereas screen printing 
it can be done by hand. Um, so for small scale cushions and whatnot, you can do sort of small scale runs where you will use a photo emulsion to coat the screen. You'll then expose your design onto it. You'll wash out your screen and wait for that to dry. And then you pull um, the print paste through that onto the fabric. So there's a lot more that can go wrong, um, but it is also a much higher quality. It's not higher quality. It's just it's a different quality. There's something extra with screen printing that digital printing doesn't quite match. Um, it's, it's very hard to, if I could see you in person, I'd be able to sort of show you two samples and really make it clear. But it's, it's basically, it's, it's a lot more enjoyable as a designer because more can go wrong, but also the happy mistakes happen that way. Whereas digital printing, um, you're learning a lot of online processes, but you're much more guaranteed with what's, what the end result is going to be. There's a lot more sort of scope for manipulation of colour. You know, you can sample beforehand and you know exactly what you're going to get when, when it um, comes out. Brilliant. Thank you for that. Very informative. Um, could you also uh, show us your designs up close? We are being asked if you can show us some of your designs. Yes, yeah, so I've got a couple of extras that are just the cases. So this is all from the same collection. So that's the bark print that you also see on the palm pot. This is actually on a cotton, whereas this is on velvet. Um, I've also got, so these, this one's one of my best sellers, which is the bugs. And you can see there it's backed with black velvet and it's got piped lining and then another of my best sellers is also the bee there. i'm trying to send back to front <laughs> and last one is the moss also this one does quite well this is, anyone that likes bugs seems to like this one a lot as well they are gorgeous Gorgeous. And um, how about the, the beautiful sunflower design behind yeah. you? So this is this is actually my personal favourite. Is the sunflower. So as you can see there, again, black backed with black velvet and it's got a gold lyrics piping. Could we also see the plant pots in more, uh, the plant bags, sorry, in more detail? Yeah, I've got a little one just to, sorry, those have actually got plant pots in them, so they're a yeah. little bit. But there, you can see that's the smallest version, that's the miniature. So it's lined with a linen lining and it's the cotton drill on the outside and it's also got a cork, cork base at the bottom to support plants as they're standing in it, so you can just stand them in. I would recommend if you want to water plants in them, Put a small dish underneath or a little glass base underneath your plant box and water will degrade the fabric over time. Beautiful. Uh, another question's come through. So um, how do you decide on which fabrics to use? That is, again, it kind of comes up in the, I have personal favourite fabrics to use. So I love velvet and linen. Um, I think those are really nice fabrics to work with. Linen in particular is quite predictable. Um, you know what you're doing with it. Same with cotton. Cotton's um, it's very easy to sort of iron and uh, print onto. Um, but yeah, it kind of depends on when you're developing a collection. There are going to be certain fabrics that suit it a lot more than other collections. So this one was very much about sort of former grand homes and um, sort of layers of history. So velvet was a natural choice for me because it's quite luxe. Um, the next collection I'm doing is going to be a lot more rustic, so it's going to be a lot more um, linens. Um, I'm going to try hemp. I haven't worked with hemp before, but that's one I'm sort of looking into using. Um, I've got some garden cushions coming out over summer that are going to be using um, a mix of linen and calico, so they're a bit more hard wearing. Um, so these are all quite, high, they're all sort of high end fabrics, they're not really for outdoor use, whereas the summer collection. It's going to be slightly harder wearing, a bit more durable. So it's, it's a mix of things. Your end use is going to play into it, the nature of the collection and your customer. So who you want these cushions or whatever you're making to go to will all play into that choice of fabric. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, also, are the prints that we are seeing screen or digitally printed? These are all digital. 
Okay. His, so the studio I'm in doesn't have a print bed, so I have to do day access, which has been pretty, you can't, you can't do that at the moment. So these are all digital, but the collection are coming out later in the year. I'm going to be back in these screen print studios. So I've managed to book a couple of days of access later in the year. So I'm very excited for that. Sounds fascinating. Um, also, what inspires, sorry, you're getting a few questions. <laughs> Um, so what inspires you, um, what inspires you and the, and does the of others do so too? So what inspires me and? And does the work of others inspire you too? Yes, definitely. So my personal inspirations come from, um, the natural, the natural world is a big one for me, but also, um, sort of local quirks and history I find really interesting. There's a huge element of storytelling in what I do or research in what I do. So. Um, as I said, things like this collection, it was the history of the houses that just got stuck in my head and really, I found really inspiring. And I couldn't wait to sort of start exploring those themes and processes. But I do also take inspiration from, there's so many great designers out at the moment, um, both historical. So William Morris was one of my big, big inspirations. I just think his work is beautiful. It's so considered, the pattern repeats are excellent. And it's, it says something that it's endured to this day, there's still a demand for his stuff. Um, but other people like um, Timorous Beasties, they do incredible stuff. They've actually still got um, screen print production on, on a large scale. So they're, they're always brilliant to look out for. A um, couple of other places, House of Hackney do some brilliant stuff, very imaginative. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a mix of both, but predominantly sort of what I, I draw what inspires me. And I'll also sort of keep an eye on what everyone else is doing because it's just it's great to see so many sort of really artistic things out there. Brilliant. Thank you so much. And thank you for everyone who's asking um, questions. It's so great that, um, that you guys are participating and taking advantage of asking um, our artists the questions. Um, finally, <laughs> quickly, could you guide us through the price ranges uh, for your products, please? Yeah, so the plant bags, the smallest ones, the miniature ones start at $13.50. There's the mid-sized one, which is 18. And then there is a large one, which is about half as big again, which is $24.50. The cushions are 120, apart from the um, beaded mushroom cushion, which is on um, handmade, which the smaller version at 15 inches is 90. And the larger one is 140. That's actually on silk with a velvet backing. Um, there are some framed fabric prints available of small illustrations and a couple of the more popular prints like the bugs on for 55 and I've got some paper original illustrations on for 40. But I do also, if there is a design that you see that you'd like to see on a different colour base, I can do that. You just have to get in touch with me via the website or on my socials um, and I can get back to you on whether that's possible if you'd like to see it on a different colorway. For example, if you wanted the sunflower on a back background, I could do that, that's no problem. Uh, thank you so much for that. Um, so, <laughs> uh, so Ellie's work is all for sale um, on our website, um, Handmade in Britain, uh, Handmade Interact. Um, so please do visit her profile. I'm just going to pop that in the chat box again so you are able to go ahead and have a look. So that was a wonderful. Thank you so much, Ellie, for joining us. Um, thank you everyone for listening and asking questions. It's been great to share a bit what I do with you. Thank you. Um, so, um, and thank you everyone for joining and, and, and participating. Um, it was lovely to see you and see your work. Uh, one, one more question. What is the one that um, inspires you the most? Which design inspired you the most so far and which has taken your brand to the next level? What caused you to take it to the next level? Sorry, which designer? Which design that you've created so far? Which, which design Ooh. inspired you to create ulterior motive designs, would you say? Oh, that's a really tricky one. Um, or is it a combination? I think it was probably a combination. It's, it started off with mostly textual stuff. So the leaves behind me was actually a starting point for me. But from there, I kind of discovered, as I was going through my research photos, I discovered all these other elements that, like the sunflower and like the bugs, 
that actually the bugs is one of the most popular it's sort of it was a bit of a curveball because I wasn't expecting many people to sort of really engage with something that's subject matter that's a bit odd but um <laughs> it's sort of one of those things that it's just been really nice to get sort of recognition reactions that I I personally I like these designs as well so um yeah I guess the sunflowers is is one of my favorites and also the bugs I really enjoy drawing that one mm -hmm. I'm hoping to be able to get some of them onto wallpapers so there's been a couple of designs that I haven't been able to release yet that are, are sort of big scale variations on these that I'm hoping to be able to get out towards the end of the year so yes yeah. um possibly the sunflower maybe the bugs would be my top one sunflower and the bugs lovely i do absolutely love the sunflower one there <laughs> behind me it's so pretty <laughs> okay. you to do sort of catch <laughs> yes <laughs> Well, thank you again. Uh, thank you everyone for joining us. And thank you so much for Ellie um, presenting and showing us, you know, describing the whole process and her inspirations behind her beautiful designs.